Konstantin Stanislavski, Sanford Meisner, Uta Hagen, Stella Adler, David Hasselhoff, they all have one thing in common. They all think they know what good acting is, but they should be wrong L. They should be marked L wrongo in that exam. And here's why. Now, with the assistance of Insipid Productions, we present Mark Levitt's Master Acting Class. As an actor, you'll be called on to play many scenes. The key to playing great acting is to play each emotion as if you're in gastronomical distress. Each separate feeling like you have to take a dump. Sure, you may think this scene is about you proposing to a beautiful woman, but it's not. It's about you looking for the nearest exit to relieve yourself bodily. Now, look at the differences in these two scenes. These two lines read differently. Cecily, I know we've been dating for a while now. And I have to tell you, I can't imagine my life without you. So, I'm asking you to marry me. Or, now, watch the scene as I play it like a man who realizes that he's asking one of the most important questions of his life, but at the same time realizes that he, he must make an immediate explosive dump. Now, if he doesn't move quickly to the nearest toilet, his proposal may end like a disgusting splatter scene in a horror film. Here's my reading of a man in gastronomical distress. Cecily, I know we've been dating for a while now. And I have to tell you, I can't imagine my life with anybody but, but you. So I'm asking you to marry me. See? See the difference? Now I present how to act with another actor who has terrible halitosis. Every actor at some point in their career will be forced into a tightly blocked scene with an actor with really bad breath. You're not acting with machines after all. You're, they're human beings. They had lunch. Maybe they had dinner, onions, cottage cheese for lunch. But you have to play an intense love scene with them. So how do you do it? What do you do? Do you feed them a breath mint? No, breath mints can only do so much. Like feeding Godzilla a Tic Tac doesn't really work. No, what I'm suggesting is something different. Give them a novelty store funny glasses with that nose, you know, the nose with the mustache and funny glasses, but have them wear it on the back of their head. See, on the back of their head, so their mouth will be facing the other direction. So the full effects, the brunt of their breath, will be hitting the wall, not to you. And you can commit to the integrity and realism of the scene. Now, I see no reason why this would, would produce any logistical difficulties or complications, um, but the other actor may suddenly appear to have a much hairier face. Now I present movement for actors. Most beginning actors make the mistake of following the stage directions for action. Man crosses theater left. Woman sits on the couch and folds newspaper in absorption. Nothing could be more foolhardy. As an actor, your body must be free of preconceived motion. You must be free to act spontaneously, instinctively. Take dogs, take dogs for instance. Now, how do they greet, how does a dog greet a new person? They sniff them, right? They smell them. They get a good, strong whiff of the other person. So as an actor entering a new scene, you should be free to smell the other actors. Not literally as dogs do by sniffing each other's butts. That's unseemly. No, what I'm suggesting is just smell the other actors in general, like this. That's the essence. That's the key to good acting. I've been Mark Levitt.
for Mark Levitt's acting class.